But in saying that, so many people take the and they're lazy and they're soft and they don't train accessories with any intensity. And they sit there going, why aren't I getting stronger? Well, it's because you only do what you want to do. You got to do this that may not be super fun and you have to apply yourself to it and train just as hard in those movements as the ones that you love. Full stretch in the hardest position. That's where you're gonna get the most metabolic damage, which equals gains. Anyway, I've got two more to show you, and these two are single arm exercises, but I love them. They've been priceless for me in building this back. And it's pretty thick. And welcome back to your mum's favorite channel on YouTube, Cult Strength. Now today, yet again, I am gonna be helping you build a big bench. A bit of a different perspective though, okay? Now, have you heard of the saying, big back, big bench? Probably, if you've been a powerlifter for long enough, you've probably heard that term. What does it mean, Reese? Well, let me explain. I, personally, have never met a big bench presser with a small back. I don't think anyone has. I don't think they exist. Now, I've seen people with big pecs and big arms and shoulders who really don't have that impressive of a bench press. And you've got to keep in mind, you know, the opposing muscle groups, you know, that we use on a bench press is our back. You know, chest being the dominant one, but our opposing muscle groups, it's our back. So our back is our base. It's our stability. That's where we draw our fucking power from for a big bench press because yes, we do engage our back and it's severely overlooked when it comes to building a huge bench. Now, if you watch your favorite bench presses, the big dogs, I guarantee you their backs are strong as fuck and they do a lot of back work, specific back work. And it's not just aimless back work, we're doing this with the intention of building a big bench press so we're very calculated in how we do that. And that's what I'm gonna share with you today. I wanna to share with you maybe a handful of my favorite exercises for building a big, back, a big back that will help you build a big bench. All right, so we'll go over a few exercises. We'll go over two sets of each. I'll give you a demonstration. I'm gonna to explain to you maybe why you should do this exercise, because that's important, you know? Knowledge is power. I'm not just gonna sit here and tell you to do that and not tell you why. I'm here to help, I'm here to get you stronger. Let's get it. All right guys, now first up is going to be the lat pull down. Now I use a lat pull down to warm up the bench press as well, in case you didn't know. The way I see it, a lat pull down, a seated row, you kind of got to look at them like a reverse bench press. Yes, the lat pull down, we're pulling from more of a vertical position, but still how we apply this exercise is very important. Now, if you watched my bench press tutorial the other day, you know, I speak about scapular retraction and depression and using our upper back as stability on the bench. Now, when we think about the lat pull down, okay, our bottom range position, our end position, we're pulling it in into here, right? Now, what I'm trying to emphasize as a power lifter, as someone trying to build a big bench press, is retraction and depression of my scapula, which will, again, you know, be using my lats, because our lats can also control that, right? So we're pulling down, squeezing our scaps back and down, all right? And I like to slightly lean back on the lat pull down. You can lean back a little bit if you want to. I don't recommend swinging. That's not what I'm saying. I'm gonna give you a demonstration now. And when people say you need to be strict, I think it depends on the definition of, of strict in what they're talking about. I'm also gonna give a demonstration of what a strict lat pull down or seated row will look like. I'll do that after, because we do need, you know, some movement. We need flexion, extension in certain parts, and I'm gonna explain that as we go. But right now, we'll do a set of lat pull downs. Pay attention to obviously what I'm doing. I'm starting from a full stretch position, full range of motion. We're not cutting anything short with these. If you want a big, bench press and a solid foundation, don't cut fucking corners with your accessories, okay? Full stretch, full contraction. 
Okay, so we're here. We start with our, with our head through the hole a little bit. Our arms are fully stretched. All right, now we're gonna squeeze it in. So, easy peasy, as you can see, I'm not necessarily strict, all right? Because I'm going to show you what strict kind of looks like. We'll go a little lighter, just for demonstration's sake, but it doesn't look flowy or natural or even applicable to what we're doing. So, strict would be this. There's no movement through my torso, but then at the same time, if I want to get a full stretch, I have to lean forward, okay? I can't get a full stretch if I'm staying in the same position. I need to lean forward. Now it's a lean and I'm not swinging. I lean forward and as I pull it in, I slightly lean back, right? I think about the bench press. I flare my ribs, squeeze it in like the bottom of a bench press. So lat pull down is my favorite back exercise. I like to do at least one vertical pull and one vertical, one horizontal pull uh, in each back session. This being vertical, for example, a seated row being horizontal. It's important to hit multiple angles and don't just get stuck you know, in one plane of movement. We'll take a minute, we'll get to the seated rows. All right, so that pull down is done. Seated row, now when I do a seated row, I have my preferences. Everybody has a preference in terms of what handles and grip they use, right? So we'll keep it a little general, but I like to use, these are just uh, old figure eight straps that I made into loops, right? I find when I use these as separate handles, I get an excellent stretch through my lats and my rear delts, you know, in this forward position. So I'm gonna use those. Now, in terms of, you know, sets and rep ranges, we wanna keep something in mind. It's very dependent on how much pressing you're doing. Now, what I like to think of is a good rule, is a one-to-one -one push-pull ratio, meaning for every repetition that you do of a push, whether it's a, if you're, you know, lying down doing a, a vertical press or a horizontal, you know, if you're going bench press or overhead, right? You want to equal that with either a vertical pull or a horizontal pull. So if you're doing a lot of overhead press, make sure you balance that out with your lat pull downs. If doing a lot of bench press, make sure you balance it out with your rows, okay? But it's very important to press and pull on different angles. So I like to go one-to-one -one push pull ratio but at the same time, if you're doing like heavy triples on a bench press, it doesn't mean you do heavy triples, you know, on the seated row. That's not really practical. But I don't really go under six to eight reps. And most of my rep ranges, you know, 15 to 20 reps. Okay, that's where I tend to like to work. It's good for hypertrophy. And, you know, sometimes occasionally we push into the heavier weights, but also keeping in mind that all of my training is heavy. And sometimes just doing more heavy stuff isn't that valuable. Okay. So we'll do a set of these now. We'll get you to film just from the side here and maybe just a little bit around the back as we go. So as you can see, I want you to look at my torso angle, okay? And understand that, again, I'll give you an example of strict versus not strict. I'll start with how I do it. There is movement through my torso and my spine. However, my lower back, you know, will say flexion, which is rounding, is minimal. I like to think about letting my upper back and my thoracic round just a little bit, more so to really engage, you know, them to their fullest extent. And how do you do that? An extended range of motion. You know, we're gonna get the most benefit from these movements in the position where we're at the full stretch. So I'll show you now. We'll do a set of 10. Again, these handles, I love these handles for doing fucking seated rows. I have expensive handles. These are cheap and shitty, but they do the fucking job. 
All right, so we're gonna start from a slightly more upright position, right? But now we're gonna go here. Letting it stretch. So, as you can probably see, I am getting a really good stretch through my lats and my rear delts. When I'm squeezing in, I'm thinking about pulling the handles in to my ribs, right? Contracting and squeezing my shoulder blades together as much as I can to make a big chest. So that's my intention when I'm doing this exercise. Now, a lot of people do this exercise strict, and not that it's bad, but it's not optimal. You have to understand that strict isn't always good. Strict, you know, may suggest you don't have any body control. So you still need to move naturally in a sense. So I'm gonna give an example of something more strict and it just doesn't quite look as good or feel as good. Right, so if you're guilty of this, if there's no movement, we're not going through an extended range of motion versus right, slight difference, but it makes a huge difference. It really does. It really does. So, you know, the very important factor in building big, strong muscles whatever they are, is using a full range of motion. Everyone gets carried away with partials and they get defensive when I talk shit about partials. But if you're gonna do partials, it needs to be in the range of your full stretch, right? It wouldn't just be, if you're doing a seated row, it wouldn't be this position, it'd be here, right? It's like when people do dumbbell presses and they pick a weight that's too heavy, they end up doing this, thinking this is partials. No, partials would be here, right? Full stretch in the hardest position. That's where you're gonna get the most metabolic damage, which equals gains. Anyway, I've got two more to show you, and these two are single arm exercises, but I fucking love them. They have been priceless for me in building this back. And it's pretty thick. We're we'll back in a sec. Okay, so on to the next one now. This is a single arm cable pull from a high angle. Now I got this off a good friend of mine, Dr. Andrew Locke, and he coined it the Locke lat pull. So we're gonna call it the Locke lat pull. Now, if I'm being really, really honest with you, this is actually my favorite warm up exercise for a bench press, and it's just as good for building a big strong back. The reason I don't always do it for warm-ups is I'm sometimes a little lazy with my warm-ups and doing two arms at once instead of one is a little more efficient for me sometimes. Also because time constraints can be a thing. So doing lap pull downs is two birds with one stone, but I think this is slightly better. If you have time to do this, this is an excellent warm-up exercise and also a big bench builder in terms of building mass on your back. So how we do this, it's yes, you can just stand there and pull a fucking cable in, right? But there are nuances to this. What we want to think about is we stand square with our feet. Now we're gonna push our butt back just a little bit, but more so leaning just slightly forward, right? We're gonna grab the, the cable here and I'm gonna squeeze it in. And as I squeeze it in, I'm gonna just lean into the side a little bit to really contract my entire lat as hard as I possibly can. Really squeezing and contracting my shoulder blade down my back as well. <clears throat> we'll do one set on each side and then we'll have a chat. But this is a fucking incredible exercise. You don't have to go too heavy. Remember, full stretch, full contraction. Oof. 
We'll go to the other side. That feels so good. You know, that's like when you're doing the warm-ups, when you're doing this for a warm-up sake, it's really nice to feel that pump of blood into the muscle you're trying to activate. You can actually really then feel the muscle. Again, when you're trying to chase a fucking pump, the same thing, this is unreal. You're literally just pumping blood exactly where you want it. Oh yeah. It's like a mini cramp every single rep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I do love that one. So, again, consider applying this. And when it comes to intensity of your accessory movements, how hard are you training these movements? Hard, okay, we're not, sometimes it's fun to just go fucking ham, right? And to destroy yourself on accessories, you're chasing a filthy pump, I get it, but that's not an everyday thing. We want to train hard, but we don't want to blow ourselves out. Keeping in mind, when we do this stuff, it's always after a whole bunch of heavy stuff already. So we still need to think about why we're doing it. We're doing it to supplement the bench press, okay? So don't go crazy all the time, but in saying that, so many fucking people take the piss and they're lazy and they're soft and they don't train accessories with any intensity. And they sit there going, why aren't I getting stronger? Well, motherfucker, it's because you only do what you wanna do. You gotta do the shit that may not be super fun and you have to apply yourself to it and train just as hard in those movements as the ones that you love. And that's the truth. We've got one more exercise to go. I might show you a bonus one, maybe, if you're lucky. Chat in a sec. Okay, now, the next one is, again, single arm cable movement, but simply from a lower angle, okay? So with the higher angle, we're gonna be hitting, if I can even reach and point, you know, this part of the lat is more dominantly used, where in a lower angle, you get the lower lat, which can sometimes be a very difficult, you know, part to isolate, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to do this, and also when we wrap up this exercise, I'll come to a conclusion and also we'll give you some alternatives because not everybody has a cable set up like this, but there's still things you can do, right? To get the same effect or a very similar effect, which is important, okay? And it doesn't have to be fancy. You don't have to have all the equipment. I did my first four years of powerlifting with fuck all, fuck all, and I did very well. You know, it's a luxury to have all this stuff. All you need is a bar plate, a bench, a squat rack and some dumbbells and you can get a lot done. Bands are also cool, but not bands when you do bench press and deadlifts and squats. Bands for other shit. This isn't equipped powerlifting. This is, I'd say real powerlifting. It's different kind of fucking powerlifting. All right. So low angle, similar thing, right? Same kind of torso angle, except we're leaning forward and down now and we're pulling and squeezing into our lower lat turning my hand up a little bit. All right, so as I pull in, I turn my palm to the ceiling. One more. Other side. Oh yeah, man. Straight into the lower lat. So again, if you've done a back workout and you can't feel your lower lat, are as pumped as the rest of your back. This one, baby. Straight up. Slight lean into the side. Oh yeah. God damn, man. I've just done a few demonstrations for you today. And I feel like I've just done a workout. My back is well and truly pumped. But uh, give me a minute. We're gonna wrap this up. And I'm gonna do one more bonus exercise because it is a bonus exercise. 
Okay guys, so just quickly, I wanted to go over a few alternatives for you if you don't have access to a cable machine. Now obviously dumbbells and barbells, they're an excellent alternative. I do prefer a cable if possible, but not everyone has that. So things like bent over barbell and dumbbell rows are fantastic. Chest supported rows are probably even better. So I don't think we need to be loading our spine any further. Uh, we can always do work with bands as well. We can do banded rows. Um, we can set a band up high and do a banded pull down. Again, limited with the load, but again, better than nothing. Uh, alternatively, we can do assisted pull-ups. And if you can't do a full pull-up with your body weight, simply tie a heavy band around the top and then loop it down through your foot and support yourself with the band whilst doing pull-ups. Now, those are some uh, alternatives, but I'll be sure to touch on those when I do a more dumbbell-specific video uh, in the next week or so, explaining how you can utilize dumbbells to build your bench press. You know, that's very important. Uh, there's many different angles and aspects we need to consider uh, to, to build that complete package. I hope that helps. All right, guys, we're gonna wrap it up in a minute, but a couple more things that are very important. Now, when do you train back? Typically, I would train back after bench press twice per week, but right now, I'm not bench pressing twice per week, I'm bench pressing once every four to five days. So what I have is, you know, I have three training days a week that are heavy, squat, bench, deadlift. It works out to be roughly three sessions a week, but that means there's four days of nothing. And I don't do four rest days, no fucking way. So what I found is that because I do have this opportunity and the time and I can afford myself the luxury of training any day, any fucking time I want, so I'm in a fucking gym, is I split my sessions. So I do my bench and my pressing by itself and then I'll have a day where I just train my back and I get double that amount of back work in to make up for those two sessions I'd normally train back, right? So I just double down on the movement and spend a whole session working on that body part or muscle group. Um, I also do a little bit of back on my bench days again because I do warm up with lat pull downs and things like that. So that's when I do it, although most people don't have the luxury. So if you're gonna do it after pressing, okay? After bench press, after your shoulder pressing, whatever it is, try to get it in twice per week, unless you can dedicate one full session to training your back, all right? One more bonus tip, very simple exercise. Now, this is something I do, again, to warm up. I do it after lat pull downs. I also do it between sets because I really find that it helps my bench press in the sense that it allows me to engage my lats especially under here to get that stability that I was talking about the other day when we drive our, our lats and our, and our scaps down into the bench, right? And our traps, trying to get our traps down. This exercise is excellent for priming those muscles immediately before you do a set. And it's very simple. Get a band, medium resistance, nothing too crazy, all right? You can uh, regress it and progress it depending on how wide you grip. So if you wanted to make it easier, Grip wider, make it harder, grip closer. But all we're doing is, show you from here, arms straight in front, band pull apart all the way into your chest. So elbows locked, pull that band apart, pull it into your chest, and think about using your rear delts and your scaps to actually make this happen. All right, and we're just squeezing back as hard as we can. And I'll do eight to 10 repetitions before every bench set typically, and I also find that by doing this, it also reduces my shoulder pain when I'm bench pressing, which is big for me because I'm benching heavy every four to five days at the moment leading into comp. And my shoulder health has taken a bit of a toll, which is normal. So doing these sorts of things and making sure I stay on top of my back exercises helps me stay healthy and strong so I can get through my training. Now, that's another reason people hurt themselves on the bench so often is due to imbalances. Too much pressing, not enough pulling. Now you pull yourself plenty. So why don't you spend some time pulling in the gym and not chicks or dudes doing back exercises. That's my advice to you. If you wanna get a big bench, don't neglect your back. Trust me, you know, or just have a look around. Look at some big fucking bench presses. I'm talking 250 kilos plus bench presses. They got big backs, man. There's no denying it. Anyway, I'll be sure to do some more of these tutorial-like videos. I'm thinking next week we'll do a version, uh, but with pressing. What other pressing exercises 
can we do to build a big bench? You know, with dumbbells, etc. Anyway, until next time, go to the fucking gym, like this video, subscribe, and drop a comment. Let's go.